you stand there solidly, your feet are all in the wrong position. You're going to get hit all the time. You've got no way to move. You should, if you bounce, you should be able to bounce, keep your feet. Not a show. Luther, come and throw a few right handers at me. Well, it's typical, isn't it? Right, look, I'm moving, right? I'm moving. Hello, Arthur. Hello, Hello, George. You got a kid down here, then? Yeah, my boy, Tony McCann. Helps him out with her boxing. No, ain't that public spirit? Oh, yeah. How's the little lady, Dick? Oh, a diamond, George. A treasure, eh? Hard, oh, like splint. He's still a bit tasty, or Terry, isn't he? He does all right by me, I reckon. Dad, can I start Brenda's tonight? They say uh, you don't mind subletting him. Is that right? Depends on the price, George. And a job. Nothing dodgy. Well, I'll put you on to something not strictly kosher. Oh, come on. Dad, can I? Look, shut it, Anthea. Well, what's the score then? There's a couple of punters use my place in South Cape. They need a bit of muscle. And the money's good. Can I make a meal? Why not? Make him have it, Terry. Go on, give him the old M.E.W. Now, what exactly are you gentlemen looking for? It's not easy to describe the sort of person we need. Um... Essentially, Mr. Daly, we're seeking a man who looks the part. You know, a bit... Uh... Tasty, but not but too... But not so much as to frighten people. Sounds like my Terry. What's the job? Oh, simply to reassure a visiting client. Look after him. Discourage anyone taking advantage. We wouldn't want him with any kind of, uh, you know. A shooter. Oh, Terry never packs one. We're strictly legitimate. George knows that. Then I think we can do business together. So where'd you hear about this? George Lewis down the youth club, picking up his kid. Saw your boxing, reckoned he'd get you a job for a couple of days. Who's George Lewis when he's at home? He owns an escort agency. A club in South Kent. You know, discotheque and supper. A couple of tables upstairs, some girls. What, is it all who raise and Arabs? Uh, I've arranged an interview for you. An interview? Mm. What's he want? A mind or a bleeding brain surgeon? Here you are. Two o'clock at that address. Yeah, all right. A bit dodgy, though, isn't it? Mm. And wouldn't you think they could hire some proper muscle? Well, maybe they don't know their way around. Yeah, but maybe they do. Cheers. Cheers. Mr. Elliot? Yes? I'm Terry McCann. I believe Mr. Daly had a word with you about me. Have you been inside? Look, just tell me what the job is, eh? It might be too high class for me. Carry a piece? No way. Anyway, what do you want a bodyguard for? Big boy like you. It's for a colleague. Ah. A Mr. Saeen. French? Arab. Lebanon. He's in banking. Commodities. Very influential. What's he want a babysitter for, then? Oh, they get a bit paranoid out there in the Middle East. It's part of his contract. Rented house, chauffeur, bodyguard, manservant, you know, the sort of thing. Oh, yeah. My dad never travels anywhere without him. He'll be here for three or four days. days. The car's a Rolls Royce. And what we're looking for is a driver Come minder for Mr. Sain. Now, listen, I'm not poncing around in all that chauffeur's gear like somebody's pet monkey. Personally, I never thought monkeys could drive. <laughs> but so long as you look tidy, where would you like? Any questions so far? Well, yeah. Let's get it straight. Is anybody liable to have a go at this, Mr. Sain? Good Lord, no. You can look forward to a nice, easy three days. Clock stopped. 
Don't worry, the manservant will wind it. Manservant? Yes. Mr. Sain will need somebody to run the house. Listen, if I'm going to look after this geezer... I think I ought to be there when you choose this manservant. Check him out. I mean, we don't want a tea leaf about, do we? There's no need to worry, Terry. Your Mr. Daly is providing the manservant, so he's bound to be OK. Now, where shall we start? Yeah, well, we want to check all the locks. Doors, windows, that sort of thing. All the light switches, creaking boards, anything that might put us in lumber if somebody has a go at us. I can't see Elliot being too pleased with you running around in his roller. Don't worry, Terry. When the wind of good fortune blows, you've got to capitalise. Opportunity knocks but once. But what are you going to say to this geezer anyway? He's got a very busy programme. Look, he's a banker, right? When did a British businessman, e.g. me, allow an Arab banker to walk in and out of his life without relieving him of the odd hundred Gs? Now, why would he give you a hundred thousand? Listen, Arthur, I'm sorry, mate, but you're not in his league. Terry. Oh, you do know how to wound, you really do. Not in his league, eh? Who looks after you, son? Who got you a job driving a Rolls Royce when three days ago you were barred from the snooker all for a six-pound debt? Look, I'm getting late. Yo, don't forget the introduction. This is the managing director of Lockfast yeah, Securities. Yeah, I've got all that. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be just over here, walking, uh, walking by, sort of dead casual, you know, probably smoking a proper cigar. That's really going to dazzle him, Arthur. Yeah, it's a brown model right in front of you. The boots open. No, uh, Mr. Sayin. You have some identification? Yeah, of course. You work for Mr. Sardin? No, Mr. Elliot. On a contract. A contract? I hope not. No. Oh, sorry. I see a contract, yes. Uh, but, uh, the car says, my sir. Why? Bless my soul. Oh, yeah, um, Mr. Sign, this is Arthur Daly, <coughs> managing director of... <coughs> Sorry, mate. Who on earth is that? Uh, Lockfast Securities, sir. Managing director. My God, I'm being plagued by scavengers. Please drive on at once. Boy, oh, this isn't an adventure playground. What the hell are you doing here? A bleeding manservant, isn't it? Arthur hired us, some, some wog. Look alive, he's here. Oh, your highness. The Sheik Sain, I believe. Salam Aleikum. <laughs> uh, aleikum Salam. Yes, yes, I, I, I heard the Effendi's limousine pull up outside. And I was sure the sheik would be grateful for a refreshing glass of cognac. That is kind, but it is against my religion to drink. Oh. Your name is? Adai Llewellyn, at your service, sire. Effendi, we are a bit rough around the edges. But for the tops in cooking and the washing of bottles, as they say, look no further. Have no fear of Hendy. Die is near. Well, um, uh, uh, Llewellyn. No, no, uh, Llewellyn, sire. Um, but be not troubled. Uh, we, we Welshmen have great, great difficulties with Arabian words like uh, camel and uh, oil. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. Yes. 
Llewellyn, I wish to bathe in five minutes, and I want no herbs or perfumes in the water. Also, please get my luggage from the car. Hang my suits, put my shirts, etc., in their places, and lay out my gray three-piece suit with a white poplin shirt and a red silk tie. Also, I shall require a bowl of consomme and a water biscuit for my lunch in one hour. And I want this room arranged as a study with a, a desk there, so I can receive my guests on a formal business footing. Also, I am not a sheikh. Neither am I an effendi or a sire. I am Basam Sayin, sir or Mr. Sayin, to my staff. Understood? Luggage from car, bath filled with water neat. A uh, grey whistle, white shirt, uh, red silk tie, uh, uh, soup, hardtack, and the desk in this room. No oriental titles, just Mr. or Sir. Got it, sir. Your wish is my command. Where in the name of Allah did he come from? Must be the agency. Half hour full body massage. Assisted shower. Topless, two girl topless or VIP. I only happen to be joint managing director of this place, darling. Where's Frankie? Look, are you some kind of nutter? I'm going to get Terry onto you. Terry's not here, is he? How do you know? Because Terry, like you, sweetness, works for me. Where is she? Hi, doll. Come to inspect the investment. Francis, at the risk of industrial action, will you ask this young lady to smile at the customers and make the service we offer sound less like a sentence of transportation and you get sizes? You heard the man. Be kind to the punters. Right, business love. We got this rich Arab up West Kent. Big house, portable banknotes. Go in. Can I have a word, please? Of course. What can I do for you? Something you said in the car. You asked me if I was carrying a gun. Oh, nothing. Is there something I ought to know, Mr. Sine? No, 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 nothing at all. I have some delicate negotiations going on back in my country. I'm sorry if I seem preoccupied. You can always keep in contact by phone. My presence is needed to avert uh, complications. Yeah, well, give me the simple life every time. You know politics. What was it Byron said? Politics? I thought you were in banking. Yeah, and uh, commodities. You know, you can't be a politician in my country without one of two things. And what are they? A hundred million dollars or a private army. Does this Terry McCann know what he's doing? Let's say he's fairly competent. Good. It is important that Sain is provided with a respectable bodyguard. Have you heard from Beirut? Yes, everything is fine. We can go ahead with our business. Good. Now, love, remember what I told you. Are you sure he's good for a century? Of course. Look, leave the finance to Arthur. I just want to sweeten him up for my little uh, proposition. All right, Arthur. Things I do for you. That's a spinning. I see. Uh, did he leave a number where he could be contacted? I see. Thank you. Oh, that would be Mr. Sadi. He has an appointment. Ah. Welcome to the body, Sir Willing. <laughs> Terry about? Oh, here. Yeah. Oh, Walter? What are you doing here? Where's the punter? Mr. Sain is in there. No, 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 I don't think that's a good idea. Hey, <laughs> what's this, mutiny? No, but he's not expecting you. He's waiting for a geezer called Sardi. Di, kindly announce to Mr. Sayin that the security advisor to Mr. Elliot and Mr. Sardi would be grateful for... Ah, you are from Mr. Sardi? We are business associates. May I come in? Thank you. Boudin, one of my favourites. But if pressed, I'd have to admit a preference for cannelloni. 
Canaletto, surely. Indeed. What can I do for you, Mr... Daly, Arthur Daly. I, uh, I understand you're in banking. That is one of my interests. Which is no doubt why you require the services of my man, Terry. Danger of kidnap. But London is not like Rome. I have good reason for requiring a bodyguard, Mr... Daly. Of course, Mr. Sayin. One can't be too careful. And with my Terry as your minder, you couldn't be in better hands. Why? Mr. Daly, I am a busy man. Please come to the point. I have uh, private business interests. Capital very much in a spoken-for situation, so to speak. A opportunity to make four, four and a half millions. Oh, I am very pleased for you. And? And I am prepared to offer a businessman of impeccable credentials, such as yourself, the opportunity to make a small investment, say, £150,000. Yeah, I have not that kind of money. Oh, I'll arrange a meeting to familiarise you with all the details. I mean, my accountant... Forgive me, but I could not contemplate doing business with a, forgive me, a complete stranger. Well, perhaps I can take you out to lunch. Shall we say tomorrow? One? I'm afraid my schedule forbids it. Pleasure to meet you, Mr... Uh, Daly. Goodbye. Perhaps some of your colleagues. We are not in the investment business. Thank you for a generous offer. Well, at least we've made contact. Indeed. I'll uh, just leave you my card. You are too kind. Day or night. Goodbye. For the present. <sighs> All right, Chief? Hmm. You know, Terry, I have been to London before. Yeah? I stayed in the Dorchester Hotel, private suite, three bodyguards, all armed. My first guest was the permanent secretary at the Foreign Office. What's gone wrong? Yes, I want to call Beirut. Di? You all right? Oh, sorry, boy. Just getting the sheik's recreation sorted out a bit. Oh, well, hold on, hold on. Thank you, Nick. Oh, hi, Terry. Oh, look, don't get the wrong idea, boy, or no. This is for Frank's nerves. You know how it is. Uh, nerves? What's going on? No, a standard drill for your Arab, isn't it? Come this time of day, they like to um, slip into something casual like. He think that we were not on the ball if we hadn't spirited a little uh, Turkish delight into his boudoir, see? All right, whose idea was this, eh? You, get dressed. Come yeah. on. Come on. Arthur's, right? Well, he said he'd be good for a ton. <sighs> now, listen, Di, something's up, so lay off the gargle. Up? What? Well, I don't know, but something's wrong. I can feel it. Bother, boy? Yeah, maybe. In the meantime, you get her to the kitchen and spirit her out when the coast is clear. Got it? Bloody Arthur. And Khalid, did you talk with him? Yeah, I'm not sure. There's no sign of Saadi or the Englishman Elliot. Yeah, and no reply from the telephone. Very well. I shall call again tonight. Everything all right, Chief? I don't know, young man. I'm sorry about your friend Daly and uh, his business proposal. Don't worry about it. He'll survive. I can't understand how a fit, bright young man like yourself should want someone like Arthur around you. Yeah, well, I've often wondered that myself. Heart of gold, though. And he got you this appointment, hmm? Well, through a friend of his who met a couple of blokes in a club. Elliot and Sadi. That's right, yeah. He said they needed a minder, and here I am. What's up, Mr. Sain? 
Don't you think I'm up to no, it? No, no, Terry, I think you are very able. It's just... No disrespect. Well, are we, then? I think you're out of your class. I'm sorry. My enemies do not box fairly. They are not English cricket players. Enemies? Hold on. Elliot said he was hiring me to babysit a nice old banker who was a bit fussy about his status. He said you needed a minder the same as you need a big motor or gold taps on your bath. Appearances. Elliot told you this? Yeah, well, that was the drift. But now it don't square with the vibes I'm receiving. You're in trouble, aren't you? <sighs> Frankly, Terry, I cannot really afford to be away from Beirut right now. Beirut? I'm... There you go again. I'm sorry? Begging the bleeding question. Look, we're talking about enemies, me being out of my class, and all because I suspect that I'm not dressed properly. Dressed? But your clothes are perfectly... No, no, no. Tooled up. Carrying a gun. Ah. So come on, then. Let's see what we're getting into. I'm sorry. I'm merely getting impatient, that's all. Yet my hands are tied until Mr. Sadi turns up. Is that the truth? Of course. Now, if you will excuse me, I have a great deal to do. Where's Frankie? Is she gone? Oh, getting changed, yes. yes. A any more news on the bother, Terry Bob? Oh, I don't know, but I don't like it, mate. Um, listen, you just see that Frankie gets out of here, all right? Arthur? Yes, Terry. No, everything is not all right, mate. Listen, this bloke's saying is into something really heavy. Come on, Terry, don't let's get paranoid. But the last time he came to London, he had three armed bodyguards. Now, nice old bankers don't go around mob-handed. You, um, reckon there's, uh, danger? I reckon, as you might say, Arthur, that he's been lured here from Beirut. Well, for what purpose? For the purpose of topping. Oh, Hello, you there, Terry? Get out now, right away, and bring Di with you. But, well, maybe I'm imagining it. And, and maybe you're not. Maybe you're not. Look, I'll phone Elliot and tell him he's got to replace you. I'll, uh, I'll tell him I need you for another job. And listen, Terry, if there's any aggro, bug out, right? If it comes down to shoot his arm off. Good boy. I'll ring you. OK, thanks a... Thanks a lot, Arthur. You're a prince. Tent, the freedom of the noble nomad have given way to telephone, gold-plated fountain pen and pocket calculator. By the way, uh, did you know St. John Philby out, out there in the desert? Llewellyn, I am not a nomad. Now, what do you want? Yes. Um, I was a Prisoner of the Japanese, you know, sire. Also, a valley to the late Peter Rachman. Oh, please, in, I am very now, busy. In other words, your serenity, I am acquainted with the world. Other parts, other customs, isn't it now? Lowly. Yes, yes. Look, a little diversion, sire. A little breath of Arabic. I do not need. Ah, sire, sire, you see. A good man's servant anticipates, anticipates the needs of his master. Very well. Get on with it. <clears throat> no, please! This is unbearable! Bloody Arthur! Shukram, Masalama. Ma 
They can't find Saudi either, eh? Well, you speak Arabic? No. I read expressions. Listen, I got rid of the circus. Dyer's making a curry. He's not a bad cook as it happens. So what's it all about? Why should I confide in you, young man? Look, you may have a private army in Beirut, but here in West Kensington, you've got me and a gargle happy Welsh chef. When I asked if you had a gun, I was surprised you said no. Elliot should never have provided me with an unarmed chef to call. Aye? Bodyguard. I had two, all armed with submachine guns. This isn't Beirut. But Elliot knows that my life is always in danger. And then he hired you. And the lunatic manservant, it's beyond my understanding. friendly London Bobby. Don't call the police, please. I'm sorry, sunshine. It's my life I'm worried about, number one. Except it's academic now, isn't it? Know what I mean? They've cut the line. Ah, standard practice before an attempt. God, you're magic, Abdul. You know that? You're really fun to be with. squirted with a washing up liquid tell. Yeah, well done, mate. Come on, let's leg it. Uh, gentlemen, thank you. It appears I was very mistaken about you. Yeah, and we were mistaken about you and all. If you're a banker, he's a bleeding appeal court judge. From now on, sunshine, you're on your own. And if you see any of your pals, tell them they better not show up around Wandsworth. I understand, Terry, how you must feel. Right, Terry, let's go, boy. It was very brave of you. I mean, I mean, you were unarmed. Yeah, well, this is out of my league. See you around. Yes, I, I understand. Uh, be careful on your way out. Cheers. Come on, tell I can get the plant of a huge feet, boy. But we can't just leave him there, can we? Oh, dear, you mad quixotic fool, boy. Yeah. Come on. That's right, Arthur. Shooters and everything. There's white tapes across the road. Oh, you're joking, Frankie. You have to be joking. Oh, my God. Oh, my good God. Listen, you Scarborough, and, and if the law stops you, have a fit or something. Oh. Good morning. Oh, this is a pleasant surprise. <laughs> you're in trouble, Daly. Good Lord. My life is full of troubles. <laughs> Trouble like this is what we call fatal, Mr. Daly. You're annoyed. I can always tell. Let me offer you a cup of... No! Do you listen to the radio? Read the newspapers? 
You mean you haven't heard? Heard what? There was a small war yesterday up in West Kensington. That number 16, Billingham oh, Guard calls. Oh, no. Very well acted, bravo. Now tell us what you want, what the deal is. Deal? To return our client to us unharmed. Ah, uh, uh, no, look. I'm, I'm, I'm not acting. I mean, you, you've got to fill me in on this. You're Mr. Terry McCann, ace bodyguard, and a manservant have kidnapped our client. Oh, no, this is terrible. What, why have the police not been round here? This is a diplomatic affair, Mr. Daly. Yeah, but I mean, a kidnapping? You could, you could try the sympathy angle. We prefer to handle it ourselves. Now, you're a sensible man. Perhaps we could discuss some sort of financial arrangement. Uh, what, uh, what sort of uh, financial arrangement? We could pay you £40,000 to have our client return safely. Come into my office, Mr. Elliot. Bloody good of your friend letting us toss here tell. Yeah, well, he owes me a few. Wakey, wakey, Omar Sharif. Grab up, boy. I imagine several people owe much to you, Terry. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. I answer. I assure you, Mr. Elliot, that if at all possible, I shall arrange this transaction to the satisfaction of all concerned. If it's not possible, Mr. Daly, you know the alternative. Alternative? Understood? Perfectly. Yeah, look, if they won't agree to uh, 40 grand, can I, um... No games, chum. Just get sign here by lunchtime, all right? And I'll bring the money. 40 grand? Of course. Hello, Terry. It's me. Arthur. Listen, just as we figured, they've been round. And they have come up with a very interesting deal. They want to buy Chummy back off you. No. Now, now listen, Terry. The man is offering a great deal of bread. 5,000 smackers for the return of Say In. No. No, 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 no. Look, look. I am prepared to split that right down the middle. Get lost, Arthur. It's no deal. Now, listen, we need... Just, 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 just. I said, listen. We need a motor. Are you sure about the five grand? Look, look, I may be able to push them up to, um, eight. All right, all right, just a thought. OK, I'll get a motor over to you. Give us your address again. Yeah, yeah, right, got it. Take care, Terry. See you. Thanks, chum. Now, why don't you just drive on over there? We'll keep you company. Get knotted. What do you think I am? If I leave you here, it will be as a stiff. You're not a nice man, Mr. Elliot. Not nice at all. So Elliot set us up, using dying me as stooges. Right, now what I want to know from you, Sunshine, is who I'm dealing with and why. Also, other little incidentals like how many, and are they or not coppers or something? They are not policemen. I entered this country on a false passport. Oh, that's wonderful. In Beirut, I am a very respected man, well known. I seldom leave the enclave held by my own faction, for we have enemies who want to kill me. Oh, that much I can vouch for, boyo. Mahmoud Safia Sardi is a member of our government. He urged me to leave my people to come to London to have secret meetings with the Americans. He guaranteed full protection, which I got, despite his efforts. So this Sardi double-crossed you? And Elliot in the Glee Club are his boys. And they'll have another go, your omnipotence. These lads don't give up. I have to get back to my people. If you could only get me to the airport. Yeah, that's no problem. My man's on his way with the wheels now. Not this one, I think. The van. Now, as if we'll travel in the back, you will drive to the address you wrote down and remain in the van. That's all you have to do. Any attempt to signal or warn McCann or his companions, and you will be shot. Is that clear? Yeah, I got that. Right. Spokesman's 
said that the two robberies think this will go off okay, boy? Shut up a minute. ...relating to the shooting incident which took place at Billingham Gardens, Kensington yesterday evening is that police have recovered two bullets and traces of blood which indicate at least two men were injured in the affray. Detectives are trying to trace the occupants of the house which had been rented to a Middle Eastern government for some years, but at the moment they have no leads as to their identity. Thank you, God, for that. I must say, Chief, I admire your cool. The work has to be done. Do you think we'll get through the airport in safety? I don't know. Look, maybe you should call your embassy. They'd help, wouldn't they? Who knows who to trust? Saad is probably in control there. I wouldn't be doing this now if you'd pressed on with the assault on the house. What are we paying you for? You wouldn't say that if you've been there. I thought the bodyguard was going to be a walkover. Apparently, we were wrong. Oh, no, my friend. You were wrong. That's the pub. Okay, let's hit it. Oh, you're included, are you? That's what I pay you for. In that case, we'll do it my way. What's the problem? Stuck here in a ruddy pub, isn't it? Liquor, liquor everywhere and not a drop to drink. Be time enough for that when this is over, mate. I might even join you. Patience. I told him when to arrive. Do you know a Welsh song, um, David o Gary Gwen? Good God. A friend of mine in Beirut used to sing it. Oh, a Welshman? Mm, an Indian. He came from Bombay. Here he is. Seems all right. Why doesn't he come out? Ah, uh, dead cautious, our Arthur. Right, here's the plan. Just sit like that. Right, go over it. Winking indicator means all clear. Then we come down and you pick us up at the door. And any obvious bother and we're on our own. Yeah, get out as soon as you can. Use the confusion. If, there, if there's any shooting, Terry, now what, what, what do we do? Dial 999. I'm sorry, but I'm not getting croaked for you, Mr. Sign. No, I understand. Window? Oh, yes. Yeah, all clear, Terry, boy. Good luck. Yeah, and thanks. Don't thank me yet, Mr. Sign. Right. You two get in position. I really prefer not to be involved. Listen, we take them as they cross the pavement to the van. Nothing could be simpler. The shooting will be done by my two men. You and I are merely spectators. He must get into the van. Do not alert him in any way. God dear, you look terrible. Let's get this over with, Terence. Terence? You all right? Yeah. Hop in, please, Terry. Listen, you shouldn't mix with the heavy mob if it makes you ill. Ah, oh, I thought it'd be something like this. I'll tell you what, Arthur, you don't shake easy, do you? You will invite Sain into the van. 
Any warning will result in your death. Yeah, all right, all right. Keep your hair on. Drive to the doorway. Come on. Lovely grub, Abdul. We have a gold situation. When I'm in Beirut, I will send for you, Dai. You come and be my chef to household. All clear, I reckon. You reckon? Yeah. Bags of room. Right, then. Oh dear, oh dear, Arthur, you've hit a police bus. It's police. Polizei, savvy? No tricks. Would I trick you, my son? Yeah, that's a bit of bad luck, isn't it? What were you on the way to a match or a riot? It could turn into one. Yeah, then I know you. Well, maybe you do, maybe you don't, Squire. I always contribute to the Benevolent Fund, widows and orphans. Oh, really? Got a funny one here. Right, you. Listen, we got trouble. For God's sake, don't look round. There are shooters all over the place. Two on the pavement, one in the back of the van. They're Arab terrorists. Can you handle it? Right, sir. Name? Mr. Two. Blue shirt near the pub door and the geezer with a sling by the railings. Yeah, OK. Driver's license? No, oh, of course. Bring your mate. Oh, come on, come on. But nothing to worry about, just a slight itch. Bad luck on you, I suppose, sir. Hitting a job vehicle. Oh, well, it's an ill wind. All set. Right. got there then? Where? On your shoulder. Ugh. Ugh. Get it off for us, will you? Oh, very funny. <laughs> One of this lot, is it? Yep. I reckon you find he's got a bit of diplomatic immunity, though. Is he badly hurt? No, no, no. Just a touch of the older uh, MEW. MEW? Marlene Wallop. Mr. McCann, I've radioed for a car to take you all down to the Nick. We've got a lot of sorting out to do. Sorting out? Oh, don't listen. I just ran halfway yes, down the... Yes, if you get a citation or a hand on your collar. Oh, it's charming, isn't it? I'll tell you what, God. Look, my motor's there. I don't want to get nicked for parking, so I can take these gentlemen down there now. All right. It's the Picton Street, Nick. Do you know it? Yeah, of course yeah. I do. Ask for Detective Inspector Sampson. I'll see you there, sir. Cheers. Hey, gentlemen. All right, get rid of this lot. Come on, then.
Bristol. We've just got time to get you to the airport. Airport? What are you talking about? We're due down the nick. And on the right side of the counter. Oh, yes, he's right, boy. Oh. What? But, but on the other hand, uh, we can't let our Effendi here get done on a false passport claim, now can we? False passport? Terry, what have you got me into? Got you into it. Look, own up, Arthur. We're better off without him. Abdul is nothing but trouble. Aiding and abetting illegal immigrants, assisting a felony, or, or they, they wouldn't like that down at the Picton Street, Nick. And that D.I. is a right bastard. Well, what are you waiting for? Come on, off you go to the airport before the law puts a shout out on us. There are other cars, Arthur. Boarding now, sir. Thank you so much. Well, gentlemen, what can I say? No offense, so chic, but I like the sound of goodbye. Well, goodbye then. And I hope you will not be offended. I wish you to accept these checks. One thousand pounds. It's a Mr. Sign. There's You've saved my life. Thank you, boys. Oh, yeah. They should just take care of the van and my driving ticket. Reckless, they said. And what a shady character you turned out to be. I think I consider going into business with you. But... 